Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Mayfair Witches. Great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So immediately picking up in the aftermath of the last episode, we have the whole situation of... Rowan chasing after Keith. And it's like, Lasher's like, right, don't go after him. Use me to be your bloodhound. And he does. Finds him. He lock, basically sticks him inside. Well, he finds a, like a little hut to like kind of shelter down in. But it's like, yeah. In that moment, Lasher sets the thing on fire. And it's like, obviously, Rowan's kind of being the conduit there through him and being like, hey, do it. Do it. And I kind of wish he got something worse after everything but uh burning alive is pretty brutal so but at the end of the day the, i mean it's a representation of the fact is that rowan's kind of given in to lasher like he wanted her to so for her it's just kind of like right tess is dead my mom's dead it's just kind of well what's left you know it's like right she got revenge on all the people who uh were responsible for everything that happened to tessa uh but once again, I don't know whether this is all that remains of that organization or is it like a bigger organization and this is just a cell of it. That's what I'm... Well, we know it wasn't everybody because there was a whole rally behind it, but they might be the only quote-unquote Knights of America, whereas like the others are just behind the message, but they not might not be part of the actual organization. So that's a whole conversation. But So could we know there was like a lot of people at that rally a couple episodes ago. What was that episode six? So... Either way, um, so we are, we get a lot of clarity on a lot of interesting things. So the woods, the underground thing with like all the trees and like extended branches and stuff, I figured that was like a, a manifestation of kind of like the, her ancestry, which it kind of is. Basically, it's it's essentially a physical manifestation, I guess, of all the knowledge that the the Mayfairs have amassed over the generations. And so the she goes into like a deeper memory and it's where I guess at the core of everything, kind of the beginning of it all with Suzanne, that basically in her hut is like a manifestation. Maybe it's more so like how Cyprian was traveling through the memories. Maybe this that's where the knowledge is. It's in their blood, but to get access to it you have to travel through the memories. So to go to the core of it where it kind of all start not kind of it did start with Suzanne that's what I wasn't 100% sure of that's kind of implying like oh was Suzanne like the official official first Mayfair or was it technically her mom it's like no she was the official official begin because she's the one that formed the pact with uh, Lasher but she ended up amassing all this knowledge now I'm curious is it just in her lifetime that's all the knowledge she amassed or is it just that Suzanne has been there by every Mayfair, specifically in her bloodline of the Mayfairs. She's specifically been a part of their adventures. And so any knowledge they amassed kind of went back to her. And she kind of left it all here because Rowan ended up healing her arm uh, from the gunshot wound. And it's like, oh, it doesn't even leave a scar. And she's like, I was able to heal myself. Could I do it to other people too? And Lasher's like, yeah, you could. The fact of the matter is with us being connected the way we are, everything I have access to, which is the elements you have access to, we are one and the same. So what I'm able to do, you're able to do now. And now you have that this fountain of knowledge. I mean, maybe that's also maybe uh, Suzanne kind of took from what she learned from Lasher or maybe just she kind of made it herself based on what Lasher gave her the ability to do. So she, you know, has these written almost like in runes and stuff um, carved around of all of this. And then Lasher and Rowan proceed to do their thing, which is pretty twisted and weird when you think about where things kind of go. Uh, jumping ahead a little bit, but so things kind of played out the way I thought it was. I thought the whole 13th witch thing, she's pregnant. I was like, oh, it's Lasher literally trying to birth himself into the world. Yes, he is. Because, yes, he can influence the world to some extent, but he's limited in what he can do because he can't fully, fully interact with this world because he's on another plane of existence, which once again, we still don't know whether someone a long time ago sealed him away. Has he always been on this like kind of other side, this, this veil? He's always been on the other side looking for an opportunity because even then it's like you only like, it's only like, it, he had to have been sealed away by someone because it's like really like in all this time, it took like 300 years starting with like Suzanne on 
to make this all possible? Like, why weren't you doing it earlier? So it might have happened in the past, but whoever it was sealed Lasher away, I guess. Like, maybe this has happened last year's circumstances, what he's doing with the Mayfairs. This might have happened time and time again. It'd be really interesting if they kind of tied it into, like, you know, kind of using, like, oh, yeah, there's been, like, these things, moments throughout re uh, history. Yeah, Lasher had something to do with that, where it's like a, oh, maybe, like, um... God, what am I referencing? There's something recently, recent-ish, where it's kind of like a thing of where you represent, like, oh, all these terrible things that have kind of happened. It's been this particular thing. It's, like, it's this fictional thing in the show, but you tie it into real-world history events and stuff like that. I think that'd be interesting. Um, but I don't know if they'd go that far. But that's why I'm like, because I'm like, only 300 years to kind of do all this. I mean, the prophecy started now, but I'm like... I mean, we still don't know where, La before Lasher popped up to Suzanne, like, where did he come from? You know, once again, we still don't have the true answer of what he is, because he's everything and nothing at the same time. So, we don't know how far back he dates. Angel, devil, kind of all of the above. Which is, I mean, very re representative of Lucifer, considering, like, I mean, that's what I keep, like, treating him as. Like, oh, he's kind of just, he's just Lucifer. Because what was Lucifer before everything? He was an angel, and then became the devil, so... Uh, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, especially with the name like Lasher, like you can probably draw parallels to Lucifer, but either way, the point was he was trying to bring himself into this world because he, can, like, like I was saying, he can only interact with the world with a Mayfair acting as the conduit through which his power can flow, that his influence on the world can flow. So now it's like, hey, I don't need that. I can just literally birth myself into this world. And it's, I think so. I was like, oh, so we kind of want some like... I mean, we've had stories like this before, but I'm like, you're borderline, and, oh, I think you're not even borderline. Then we could just straight up say, like, oh, you kind of anti Christing this a little bit, ain't you? So it's like, interesting. Um, which, once again, makes it weird considering it's like, they kind of hooked up. Not like they've had their hookups a little bit before. They full blown have sex, which is weird because now he's embodying yours and Cyprian's son. So you kind of gave birth to him. It's like, it's a weird incestual thing, which, speaking of incest, we find out that, uh, Cortland, it's, well, we find out a lot of things about Cortland. Uh, he's the one that hired, uh, that guy who killed Deidre because it's like, right, because. Now that Rowan was in the picture, now that she was aware of what she was, they needed to sever Lasher's connection to her, so had to kill her, so he'd go over completely to Rowan, and we can kind of get this ball rolling now that she's the 13th witch. Um, what is specifically the witching hour? Is it specifically like 1300? Because 13 is kind of like that type of number, but I was also wondering, because I was like, is midnight considered the witching hour? Okay, I thought so, because it's like, right, so what I was reading, apparently, the witching hour actually varies, uh, it varies from, what was it, uh, the hour after midnight, so 1am, so it's kind of like, yeah, if you go by, like, military, uh, time, it's like, obviously, that's 1300, which is, you know, but it's like also between, like, 3 and 4 in the morning or something like that, I guess, depending on other, uh, things, also, this is also tied into, like, an Anne Rice book called, there's literally a book called The Witching Hour, so, I know this is, I don't know what, like, the overarching series of books is called The Lives of the Mayfairs, and it's kind of like the interview of the vampire stuff, where it's like, that's the name of one book in the long series, so it's like The Witching Hour, the name of one of the books, The Lives of the Mayfair, is the overarching series, or is that specifically the name of of one of the books that this story is kind of pulling from questions like that. I'm not well versed in like, I'm, you know, I'm not the reader, so I'm not well versed in like Anne Rice's catalog, uh, bibliography and, um, how that whole story situation plays out with the books and stuff like that. So, uh, but tangents and all that aside, kind of in the same vein and whole point, cause I did think it was interesting that we, they skipped over some, but every time like Rowan, when she was going through, her mind or well, going through like tracking down these memories and every place kept getting darker and darker. She was, it was kind of like the, the witching hour catching up to her. And obviously it was midnight when she got to Deidre. So it's kind of representative of like, right, you are the, the, the buck stops here with you. 
technically speaking, as the 13th witch. But either way, I, I kind of kind of got sidetracked. Circling back to the Cortland of it all, we find out not only did he kill Deidre, he's also Rowan's father. Now, I was like, because at first I was like, oh, wow, he, like, when when Cyprian looks at the memory, I'm like, oh, my, he killed uh, Rowan's dad, and then he went over and kind of, like, opened his jacket up a little. I was like, oh, no, you're Rowan's uh, father, you garbage piece of shit. It's like, wow, you raped your own niece. And so I guess, like, so no one will be suspicious, you set up the whole thing to make it seem like it was home dude that was uh, the guy that had sex with Deidre. Cause she, so she would be none the wiser about... I don't know whether it's a situation of he felt like he couldn't rely on anyone else to do it, or is there some selfish aspect of himself of like no like it's got to be i got to insert myself in this because he is part of the he's part of this family and he has no power so he wanted to probably insert a little bit of himself to kind of play into the legacy of it because i'm like wouldn't anyone do but maybe he felt like no we got to keep it in the bloodline like we got to keep this bloodline strong so that's why i had to be the one to insert my genes in it all because i mean like cyprian served his purpose it didn't have to be someone else inside of the family so it seems like that was I don't think Lasher was kind of okay with that because uh, he was there at the party. So maybe it's like that was Lasher's choice. But then, uh, um, but, well, because like, no, because obviously later on it implies, not implies, straight up says that Lasher knew because uh, uh, later on Roman's like, I know what Lasher knows. So now I'm like, okay, so how, how did Lasher just let that go by? I mean, once again, he was limited in what he could do. And I guess it's like, right, we got to let the plans play out because th we have to get to an end result. I'll worry about him and dishing all his punishment and all that later. You serve your purpose in uh, leading to this whole 13th witch thing. So I'll let that slide for now. You get your reward. It's like, cause I was like, what are you getting out of all this? It's like, right. Lasher promised him mortality and the man who is dying. It makes sense why he kind of latch on to that. Um, and the sad thing is for like Jojo finding out all, cause she was in the dark about so much of this. It's like, wait, dad, this has to do with Rowan. Like what's going on here? Like how, what, what is this all about? And so he wouldn't tell her. So when Cyprian showed up, that's when Jojo found out. Not only it's like she found out about Rowan, she found out about Deidre. So her entire world was uh, flipped upside down, especially because she talks about the fact is that she used her powers for her father's sake. All the the reason why he was able to amass the political and just like wealth and power that he was able to amass is because of her. She was able to use her premonitions to lead him in the right directions of like, oh, you should take this business opportunity or maybe you should make this dealing or probably like something probably with the stocks and stuff. So that's the only reason why, you know, once again, uh, uh, this guy who had no power keeps manipulating the people around him to compensate for his lack of power. Because he's always been envious. I mean, that lack of power. I mean, you could also say like probably the same thing applies to Corlata too of um, not being powerful and being surrounded by these people with gifts, you know? That's got to be a tough thing being in a Mayfair family and like, hey, uh, I don't have any gifts, but all these other people do. Like, it's definitely got to rub you the wrong way. So, because I think for Cortland, despite all that he's amassed, it never filled that void in him. Because at the end of the day, he's still human. He could still die. Hence the immortality of like, oh, I get to live. I get to do whatever I want to forever, endeavor, endeavor. But I guess it also comes down to like a be careful what you wish for. Because uh, uh, how it came, you know, uh, Rowan ended up turning him to stone. So it's like, yeah, you're immortal. You're going to live, but you're going to live trapped in this stone until someone freeze you because i because at the end of the day it's like oh i got the immortality but i guess the point was hey i'm gonna give you that immortality and i'm gonna make you stay forever petrified as a stone so like yes you are going to be alive but you're you're going to be in a state of stasis forever as the world goes by this is your just reward because it's like rowan knows i guess like last year was like no i'll give him his immortality but you you go ahead and exact your vengeance for what he did to your mom so because he was trying to tell Rowan, like, hey, I'm the one that knows how to wield this power. And it's like, yeah, you're doing all this because you lacked power and you were trying to fill that void inside of yourself by finding some other power and taking it for your own. The power that was never meant for you. You know, I, 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 that's why I'm like, it isn't just Rowan's vengeance. I'm sure it is Lasher's because Lasher's like, oh, you served your purpose. So and because I mean, I don't think Lasher is aware like self-aware in the form that he is like the essence of what he is like he's come he's kind of like a blank slate so i think that's where we're going to get into territory of last year where it's like hey he is a blank slate now he can do great good or he could do great evil and that also 
what route he's dragging Rowan down as well. So is it like, is he still there in full mental capacity inside that baby deep there, the soul, the essence that is Lasher is there? Or like I said, is he a blank slate being molded into whatever Rowan decides to like, if she gives into her darker instincts, brings out the darker side of Lasher, or does he bring out her darker instincts? It's a, it's a chicken or the egg type of situation in that regard, even more so apt in this regard, considering the, uh, the chicken laid itself as an egg, interestingly enough. I mean, that's a shitty metaphor, but I hope you get the point. I'm sure it's not a very precise or corrected metaphor, but it, it's a metaphor, hopefully, that you understand what I'm trying to go for. Either way, um, what I did think was also obviously very poetic was that who was the Mayfair that was there for Rowan when she was giving birth? It was Suzanne. I mean, obviously, it makes sense. She was the midwife. But she was also the first of the Mayfair. So it makes sense for it all come. Typical, she's the one that made the pact and everything. Um, it was a later Mayfair that found out about the prophecy. But I think it probably all stemmed from Suzanne. What I also thought... I don't know. The fact that she even said that line of like, Oh, you'll end up having power that even I never got a grasp of. That's like... Well, I just, I'm like, why are so many people in the Mayfair so okay with all of this? But then it's like, well... They all had a very calm, these, these particular Mayfairs obviously were bound to last year and it creates this symbiotic relationship that they have with them. So it's kind of like, a, it's once again, it's like, it's imbued, it's a part of them from like birth. And it's kind of like, a, oh, it's, it's eventually going to get passed down to you. So it's a part of your birthright. It's a part of you. It's kind of like your shadow self. That it, So it makes it hard to ever break away from that. That's why each one of them has gotten uh, sucked into the seduction that is Lasher. So... Kind of like taking steps back because I, I didn't cover it was the whole thing. Picking up with Cyprian and his boss. Because there were some uh, questions that hadn't been answered yet that I hadn't quite uh, thought about until I, they luckily answered them this episode. But Cyprian was trying to tell his boss, like, no, cool, cool, I get it. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this. And he touches his bus, boss's arm. It's like, right, I thought you were a... I was wondering why someone who potentially didn't have any gifts was such a high senior member in the Talamasca. Turns out you do have a gift. It's the power of forgetting. And he's even asking, like, is this the first time I've actually discovered this gift of yours? Now, it makes sense. He's the one that wiped the memory from the elevator that Deidre was murdered in. Now, he didn't kill Deidre, but he was covering from Cortland because he's like, oh, I would never kill a witch. It's like, yeah, but you assisted in the crime of covering up for. But it's like him and I guess... Cortland go away back and it's like because the Talamasca kind of like the observers from Fringe if you're familiar with Fringe it's like we're meant to just watch stuff obviously was it god what was home dude's name wasn't it September I think they were all named after months and stuff like that wasn't the main dude who ends up coming back full circle later on in the show and especially in the final season wasn't his name was it September or was it like December it was one of those I think I could actually be completely wrong but I could have sworn his name was like a month or something but yeah, their their job was to observe. That's what the Talamasca is supposed to do. But Cyprian kind of skirted that line when he got super close and invested in Rowan. But the others are, you know, his boss is like, yeah, we got to let this whole thing play out. Cyprian's sister super messed up by being like, yo, I got a chicken on my brother. He wasn't there for the birth of my child. He was, well, because she's actually being a surrogate for someone else. It's not actually just her baby, right? If I remember correctly. It was something that got brought up in episode two. I don't remember. I want to say that was the case. Like, yeah, she's like a surrogate for someone else. But it's like, yeah, I was like, oh, I wish you hadn't done that. I wish you hadn't gone asking questions. But home dude gets brought in to wipe her memory. But then like Arjuna's like, oh, cool. You needed me here so that when she wakes up, if she re doesn't remember me, cool. The memories have all been wiped. And then you're going to proceed to wipe my memory. It's like, Jesus, dude, you're just going to like, I mean, you're going to men and black everybody. It's like, I mean, I, I guess that's how this whole thing rolls. Can't let anyone know too much, especially an outsider to all of this. I even love Arjuna trying to give Cyprian some bail being like, oh, he probably didn't even know she was there. It's like, no, he did. He, we know that from that scene, he told her specifically to hide and there'll be consequences if she came out. It's like, I wish she hadn't said anything, but that's why she waited so long because she was worried about her brother and everything. But yeah, he's neck deep in all of this. Um... Jojo stayed behind and oh God, I'm forgetting what's like it's what once again isn't she like Cortland's cousin or something? The 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 black lady. I'm blanking on her name. Like I said, it, like they said it like the episode where the ritual was happening to get rid of Lasher. So now I'm like, I can't remember her name, but 
she was all about the prophecy and stuff too, but she had no idea, I guess, what it fully was about and what Cortland's part in all of this was. It's like, oh, like, it's like, wait, he raped Deidre? Like, he, he's Rowan's father? And like, oh, I had no idea he was doing some, dis like, yes, the prophecy is one thing, but he had his part to play in this because once again, he tried to interject himself in this. Like, that's why I still feel like that's what it was. Like, oh, I need to make myself a part of this because that's how I, how I don't get cut out of this. You know, I need to make sure I'm an important part of the process because you kind of need me in all of this. And he tried to continue prove, making himself useful. But uh, Jojo was talking to her. He's like, right, we got to find a different way of going about leading this family. So I'm wondering, is that Jojo and her talking about that? Like, what's going to happen with the family situation? Because I don't know if Rowan's just going to come back to the Mayfairs after everything that went down, considering how that family is just kind of like, eh, you know, especially after the Cortland stuff. So I don't. I don't know if she'll turn to him in this hour and knee or will she just stay with her child? Because I was so curious to see how that was going to play out, whether she was going to abandon the child, because we see what Cyprian's plan is. It's like, all right, let's, we need to be observant to that, right? Well, let's just take the baby from uh, Rowan and we'll, at the Talamasca, we'll keep it. And that's why uh, Cyprian's boss was like, hey, his sister's still lactating, right? All right, bring, bring her with us because that way you keep the baby from um, Rowan, but the baby gets the nutrients it needs and breast milk. But obviously that was never, Rowan's was never going to be okay with that. And she even brings it up. It's like, right. So you're literally repeating what happened to my mom. You were going to take my baby away from me just like I was taken from Deidre. Like, you're really going to do that. But for Cyprian, it's like, I'm trying to keep that. Because that's, that. yes, that's our baby. And, but at least it's so many conflicted feelings. Because yes, that is our baby. That's part me. That's part you. But it's all Lasher. And it's a part of this greater prophecy. Because... He he's gonna he's become something that is be the strongest supernatural thing in existence. So I guess like not even just the Antichrist level stuff. He's kind of on some um because I'm I'm basing the Antichrist thinking about that specifically based on supernatural. That was a thing in supernatural, but I guess like you'd also put it in kind of that Nephilim vein of things as well, like with Jack. So. Either way, it's like he is this powerful being, and I mean, and because of Rowan's connection to him, she has access to everything. So once again, the elements bring down a bolt of lightning uh, if she needs to. Uh, I mean, it's actually a bolt of thunder, not like, you, but you get what I'm trying to say. And she just walks away, and I'm like, dude, that's what do you do with that? Like, can anyone even stop her? Like, who could get close enough to like take that baby from her? No one, because if she feels threatened. She'll kill you. Plus, she kind of has a sixth sense now because she's like, oh, you're lying to me, uh, Cyprian. Who's that in the car? It's like, oh, is he from the Talamascus? She's like, he's like, no, 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 no. It's like, I know you're lying to me. I'm supposed to trust you. And here you are lying to me. It's like, I'm trying to get that baby away from you. He's controlling you. She's like, no, what I'm doing here is what I want to do. So, and you know, Cyprian's like, oh, right. Like, this isn't you. This is him. But I think, I mean, that's what the point of Lasher is like, hey, I'm setting them free. I'm like either you can say like that's like Lasher's control over all the women that he's been bound to, but there's also that element of like I'm giving them their desires. But that's also like that's all that's a catch twenty two of it. Like oh, I'm giving you a free will, but I'm also taking dominance over you as well. Uh, I'm warping your mind, and that's why I'm like that's why I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure about this baby. Is it once again full blown Lasher? In a baby form that has some evil inside of it being like, oh, yes, I'm controlling your mind, blah, 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 blah. Or is it just like a blank slate baby that has the potential to be a great evil, but it could kind of do like a Jack situation from Supernatural. You can be a great good or you could be just the end all be all of everything. So that's going to be interesting. A very interesting place to ultimately like end the season all fat. Mayfair Witches did get renewed for a second season, apparently got renewed like a month ago, like early February, so probably like a, pretty soon after the premiere, um, roughly, yeah, yeah, probably like two weeks or something after, two or three weeks after the premiere, probably, either way, uh, so now I'm curious to see where all this ends up going. Like I said, I'm not well versed in the book, so I have no idea what to even fully expect where, where we can go down storytelling wise. I don't know. Once again, I don't know what book this is pulling from. I don't know, you know, 
is it taking from this book and taking a little bit of this book or because I'm not well versed in once again the uh Anne Rice bibliography all of, like this is my at least interview with the vampire I had some semblance of knowledge because I'd seen interview with the vampire like years ago most a good chunk of it but not, not all of it and also seen Queen of the Dam which is in that same storyline vein uh but like the Mayfair witches is Un, an unknown property to me so I went into this knowing as little as possible and so I'm really interested to know where the next season would take us with all this what's next for Rowan how much of this like Lasher being by her side will that be like the entire season will she lose Lasher by the end of the season well, like I said what would the Mayfairs do will they kind of back her considering like hey she's here she's got all the power and she's going to lead the Mayfairs or will there be pushback against her trying to lead the Mayfairs will that be the cousin and Jojo doing that after everything will the Talamasca bring the full force of everything out to try and bring uh Rowan down once again the witch finder stuff once again the Knights of America how many of those people are actual full blow members that were at that rally and how much of that's just been cut off? Uh, because the rumors about the Mayfair still exist and there's no proofs. Yes, sure. But who knows what word they got out. And like I said, this Knights of the America could be like, for one, it could be a sale of something much larger as unlike there's a larger Knights of America or this Knights of America should just be a smaller part of a larger organization that has some completely different titling. But I don't think we're done with the like, uh, witch finder stuff. I think that's going to be a continuous thing. Like I could definitely see like which which is being hunted modern. I mean, they kind of already not kind of they straight up were already um, with all of that Knights of America stuff, but even more so in the future. So, and obviously this season focuses on. I mean, the story is focusing entirely on the Mayfairs. But a question I had early on, like, what about the other witches family? Like, will we see like witch on witch beef? between families like between the Mayfairs and maybe another family that feels like they're more deserving like maybe there's another family of witches that have ties had older ties to Lasher than the Mayfairs did like once again the Mayfairs only got Lasher 300 years ago once again what about everything else before that that that'd be something I'd really be interested to dive into like Lasher's history pre-Suzanne you know so a lot of things to keep in mind, whether or not we'll get those answers, well, whether I'll get those answers in season two or not, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But just in general, I'm very excited to see where season two takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.